Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the select board meeting of January 3rd, 2023. Happy New Year to everyone. May I have a roll call, please? Good, af good afternoon. Good evening. Um, present is Judith Whiteside, uh, Alan Slavin, Mr. Jared Chadwick, Ron, Mr. Ronald Bessie, myself, Tricia Wurtz, Mr. Derek Sullivan is also joining us, and um, Mr. Bowen will not be joining us tonight. Thank you. Um, Pledge of Allegiance. Let's see. Mr. Sullivan, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation of God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, announcements. I'm going to start with Mr. Chadwick. Yep, just uh, have two quick ones. Um, uh, first one is, uh, I just would like to commend, uh, the municipal maintenance department for an amazing job. They did cleaning and salting the roads after the storm on the 22nd and the 23rd. Um, and I would also like to recognize and commend the Wareham fire department, onset fire department, and all surrounding town fire departments for the amazing job in the mulch fire that took Christmas Eve and Christmas day to put out two full days. Uh, I would highly recommend that the business, any businesses with huge mulch piles invest in a water source in the future to help out fire departments. And that's it. Thank you. Mr. Bessie, Happy New Year. How are you? Good. How are you? Happy New Year. Um, you. And uh, we'll, we'll, start the, we'll start the new year off slow. I don't have anything tonight. Okay. Thanks very much. Mr. Slavin? I've been away for a while, so it's been pretty quiet. I did lose power up in Maine for about uh, oh, 20, 40 hours. Uh, some people lost power for five days up there with a storm that we had here. So anybody complaining about what happens down here, they actually do a very good job compared to other places. And that's about it. Thank you. Ms. Wartz? I don't have anything brand new to talk about, except for wishing everyone a good happy new year. I will add a little bit to what Mr. Slavin said about the storms in that here at Briarwood Beach, we had waves and a beach covered up and several homes got water in them, but not many. The, the end of the peninsula was just covered. And it ended up good for me because my grandson ended up with a whole skating rink in his yard down there. <laughs> Awesome. Good way of making lemonade out of lemons. Good for you. I have a few um, that I'd like to announce. On Tuesday, January 10th at four o'clock in the afternoon, the Friends of the Wareham Free Library will be meeting. This is a group that has supported the programs at the library consistently. They get their money from uh, used book sales, among other things. And I urge people who are interested in supporting the library to actually go maybe join the friends. Um, good news in terms of the fact that Senate bill, I can't even remember which one it is, 2552, I think, um, the charter for the town of Wareham will be signed by the governor and will become law. And that's why I have now referred to us as select board. And the bill that requested a total of seven new liquor licenses for downtown Wareham has also been passed. Two of those liquor licenses are site specific to Mr. Warren's businesses. Mr. Buckland tells me there's already somebody interested in another one of the liquor licenses available. We believe, as you all know, that the availability of liquor licenses may be a real attraction to inviting new businesses to downtown. So that's really, that's really kind of good news. Um, some bad news is that in the Minot Forest recently, and we're not really sure how recently, there was a lot of graffiti and some of it um, really nasty stuff. Minot Forest is a public property for the use and enjoyment of all of our citizens, whether they're 
five, 55, 105, whatever. And for people to be writing on rocks with spray paint and using the terminology that was used is beyond despicable in my opinion. Um, I hope that if you are a parent that you know that your kids are not responsible for that. I hope that if you are um, somebody who thinks that spraying graffiti is a great idea, I hope that you understand that it takes time and effort to erase those words. And if somebody saw those words, it could be very offensive. Um, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is on um, the remembrance trees. I wanna thank the fire department, Wareham Fire Department for wrapping the trees with deer netting so that the ornaments didn't blow away in that storm. And I would remind anybody who has a remembrance tree to please take the stuff off by the 7th of this month. After that, the trees will be being taken down. Okay, so again. Thank you, Madam, Madam Chairperson now. Uh, yeah. It was uh, Mr. Buckminster in the Division of Natural Resources had put that together for wrapping the trees mm -hmm. and then the um, the you know, Wareham Fire came out and did a spectacular job helping out as well. Patrick Marshall from the library was also out there helping. Oh, thank so, you. Yeah, yeah. Really amazing stuff. Yeah, it is amazing stuff because what it demonstrates is that our community is a community that cares. Now I want to address some innuendos and allegations that have been floating around. Um, we have received over several months a total of uh, let's see, where is it? 159,979 dollars and 40 more cents from the opioid settlements. That money is directed to the town of Wareham and it must be in care of the chief executive officer who happens to be me. So it looks like I have received the money. The fact of the matter is that the money has gone into an account the name on the account is the opioid settlement account, and no one has access to that money until people make a decision as to how the money will be used. So again, the amount of money available is 158,979.44. There were seven disbursements. We expect that there will continue to be disbursements, but no one has made any decision about how that money will be used. I did put a call in to Patrick uh, McDonald, our health agent, because the health department is in all likelihood going to be the one that makes the recommendation as to how we use that money. But again, I want to clear up the innuendos and accusations that are floating around. And that's it. Um, appointments, appointments, interviews, we have none, is that correct? Just to correct, Madam Chairperson, that represents five years worth of payments. The 155. So people don't think that you're getting that in and every year. That's five years worth of payments. Yes. And you could not set those funds aside by the DOR guidelines. That actually has to go through the general fund, which means you'll have to appropriate it through free cash to access it. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Again, there have been innuendos that certain individuals have access to that money, and that simply is not the case. Um Ms. Wirtz, could we go to item B under 7, 7B, because our 715 hearing can't start until 715. Yeah, so um, we'd like to open a discussion to review and possibly vote to send new business owners in Wareham a thank you and welcome letter. Would you like to address that? For if you'd like me to address that, I think um, more and more we need to reach out to the businesses and the people who decide to make Wareham their their home. So I'm very um, I'm I'm very uh, what's the word I want to say Ex excited. I'm excited about the fact that we're starting to reach out and do this. So I would recommend we very much go ahead and reach out to any of the um, businesses that have been new during the COVID time and, and up to the present with a welcome 
note and letter. I also think at another point, while it's not on the agenda today, we ought to look at how to do something similar to this to new people who purchase homes and move into Wareham. Great. So I had asked, um, actually sent out two different drafts of the letter. The first letter was not a very good draft because it used the word business about 75 times. But Ms. Wirtz has agreed to work with me to create a letter which we go to all new businesses saying, you know, thank you and welcome. Um, and I think I sent you the second draft. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the information is available from the clerk's office. And actually, the employees in our <laughs> office are excited about that concept of writing a thank you letter. So any of you have any questions or comments, raise your hand. Mr. Chadwick. Um, I, I, I know this is just about the letter, but um, I would also like to think possibly what Cape Cod does is possibly do, uh, you know, business re uh, recognition week, um, putting businesses up on the town billboard or, you know, supporting them on uh, town website or town Facebook page um, and possibly also a, a restaurant week, um, showing all the restaurants in town, supporting all the local restaurants that we have in town on top of just this letter, um, kind of show appreciation to all of them for what they've done, uh, okay. supporting everyone. Okay, um, that's not technically on the agenda, so we really can't discuss it, but we will. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess um, if there are no other questions, I would ask for a motion to authorize myself on the board, behalf of the board to send the letter, but that Ms. Wirtz will be co-authoring. So I make a motion that we create and send a thank you letter and a, a thank you and welcome letter to new business owners in Wareham from the select board and the town um, and just telling them how good we feel about them making Wareham their home. Is there a second to that? Second. Question? Excellent. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I will go for a roll call vote. Mr. Slavin? Yes. Mr. Chadwick? Yes. Mr. Bessie? Yes. Ms. Wirtz? Yes. And myself? Yes. Thank you very much. Did you have a setup on how that happens, uh, Madam Chairperson? For the uh, so we're we're knowing <coughs> we're learning about these businesses through what the clerk's office or yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, sir. So that's uh, not the worst thing I've been called today. Um, I know that. <laughs> so, yeah. um, all right. So through the clerk's office, then they're sending it up to the selectman's office, and then the letters being drafted or. Yes, the, the actual the draft of the letter was sent to the Board of Selectmen in the packet, and then I sent an, um, a revised one because it wasn't a very good letter. But yes, the clerk's office would be where we'd be getting the information. It is readily available. And again, the staff in our office is excited about uh, generating that letter to new businesses. Right. So what we'll do is maybe at the end of every month, get a request from the clerk's office, or how, how are we doing this? Well, for this first letter, it would be, you know, for the past, Ms. Wirtz basically indicates from the beginning of COVID, and I don't have a problem with that. I was thinking, you know, just the past year, but in the past couple of years, we've had people come in and choose to do business in the town of Wareham. So we would be looking for the information the first time around, and then on an ongoing basis, we will coordinate with the clerk's office to see how we get new information. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure what we're putting on the employees and uh, the, the processes and such. Right. And I, we need to, yes. We need to look at how many, if we're taking next step for new, new, um, new persons and things is that I then need to figure out how many annually we're doing what I need to do for general services for increases and such. So thank you. We, that's not the motion before us. The only, we could do that on the 17th if Ms. Wirtz okay. wants me to put it back on. So you would know, this, this particular one is probably, I don't know, maybe 50 letters. I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that, okay. I did a roll call vote. It's unanimous and we still have one more minute. So Ms. Wirtz, can I have 7C? I move that we accept a gift of $75 from Noah B. Young to the Wareham Free Library gift account. Second. 
Motion made and seconded to accept a gift. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I will uh, go for a roll call vote. Mr. Slayton? Yes. Mr. Bessie? Yes. Mr. Chadwick? Yes. Ms. Wirtz? Yes. Myself? Yes, Five zero zero. I am going to ask if a representative for Mary Labonte is here for our 715 hearing. If you are here on behalf of Ms. Labonte, could you raise your hand, please? Okay. Um, I, it is 715, so we can call for the hearing at any time after 715. I will make a phone call in a moment and see if I can find where Ms. Labonte is. Um, Ms. Wirtz, how about is seven? That the, uh, is that for her, her, the liquor license application? Yes. And she's, I don't know what's been happening, but Mary's been in front of us for her, for her seasonal, for, for everything. I mean, while well, I'd love for her to get a plug in for the business, I don't know about holding it up, but you, you tell me what you, what everybody feels like, but I mean, she's become an institution in this town. I don't, I'm just going to make sure that I, if I, I'm going to make a phone call, I'm going to step aside from the meeting. I'm going to try and call her on the phone number that I have. If she is not here, I will still call for the hearing, okay. but I want to make sure that she re was reminded of the hearing. Okay, perfect. Ms. Wirtz, um, I'm going to let you go on 7A while I step aside. All right. Um, I move that we make a motion um, to open a discussion and review possible vote regarding selectman policies, including those from um, 1988 to the present. And the motion is to sunset those policies. So we wanna open it and discuss it and then possibly go to a motion. Anyone have any input on um, Alan? Uh, the policies we've discussed uh, quite a few times over the years, <clears throat> a lot of policies really fall into HR areas, which we really don't need to have as selectman policies. And basically, a lot of selectman's policies, per se, and almost all of them, really hold no weight, actually. If we were to have a court case or whatever, uh, it, it wouldn't hold any weight at all, because unless it's somehow linked to the charter or the bylaws, it really is not enforceable, per se. I think it's best we go back to square one. I believe we have a, two policies that are that have been recommended to put in place and everything else to be sunsetted to go back through it to see things that we can put on there that actually are A, enforceable and are technically completely legal and don't require special charter provisions that don't exist now. And one of the things that um, is in our handout package and if there are people in the audience um, who are not aware of what's in this package is there was a substantial amount of time spent at the end of the year looking at all the policies that are in place for in, for the select board right now. And when you look at them, 99.99% of them are actually not policies or their um, rules and regulations that might be um, applicable from the state or from other organizations. And simply it's a restatement of those pieces of information that have ended up as select board um, policy. So the issue is not, for those who are listening, the issue is not to throw everything out and say they're not important anymore. But in fact, that information or the policies that apply are um, copied from something else other than the state, or in fact, they may not be policies, they may be things like office procedures. So it's not that the behavior has gone away, the, the, um, it just doesn't need to live in as a select board policy. So I'm not sure I heard all of what you said. I cannot reach Ms. Levante. So as soon as we finish this discussion, we'll go into that hearing. But um, it occurred to me about six weeks ago that we have uh, we have a folder that's about three inches thick of policies that go back to 1986 or beyond. We don't, you know, I'm guessing that you explained that most of what we are sunsetting is either covered by mass general law, by federal law, 
by our HR system, by the sewer commissioners, because the selectmen used to be sewer commissioners. Um, and some of it just plain is, you know, stuff. You've all heard Mr. Bowen say that policies really don't hold any water. They are in the direction of the town. So for instance, we had a seatbelt policy. Well, let's cover it under the law, guys. So in order to hopefully alleviate some of the burden on our office staff, the project um, was to look at every policy, see where they belonged, and ask you to sunset every single one of them, and then have the two that appear to be um, important policies voted as brand new policies. So the book that contains this much of paperwork will go onto a shelf and we will start a new policy book, presuming you want to create the two new policies and we will start all over again. And one of the things that I um, really liked about this project is, is that we are keeping a record of where these so-called select board policies are actually located now. So if there is somebody in the town who's looking for a policy that they thought used to be a select board policy, we can reference them to where it actually lives. It that, doesn't just disappear. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. Mr. Bessie, you have a question? Comment? Uh, actually, I'm, I'm just in a, in a conversation uh, with uh, Ms. Labonte. She's trying to get in, but she's having an issue. Oh, um, I see her. So you see her now? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, Mary, we're going to let you in in a second. Excellent. Great. Um, so we have a motion, I believe. Thank you, Mr. Bessie. No problem. Um, we have a motion. Do we have a motion, Ms. Wirtz? Did you make yeah. a motion? Did so you do let yeah. me restate it. I have a motion that we vote to approve to sunset the policies that are in place from 1988 to the present, that is the uh, select men policies, select men policies. Could you please include the word select men policies because they were select men policies, including those from 1988 and any others because there may be some that go back to 1950 that we don't know about. So could you make, could you restate your motion please? So I make a motion that we vote to sunset uh, select men policies including those from 1988 or earlier to present. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Motion made and seconded to sunset all of the previous policies. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I will go for a roll call vote. Mr. Slavin? Yes. Mr. Chadwick? Yes. Mr. Bessie? Yes. Ms. Wirtz? Yes. Myself? Yes. Ms. Wirtz, do you have two policies you'd like us to adopt? Yes, um, so there are two policies being put forward. I'll make a motion for both of them. So the motion is to adopt policy number 23-01, Stabilization Fund and OPEB Trust Fund policy. And the second policy is policy number 23-02, Select Board Policy Statement Access to Town Council. Is there a second, second. to that motion? Second. Seconded, seconded, and you have drafts of both of those in your packet. Is there any further discussion on those two proposed new policies? Hearing none, I will go for a roll call vote. Mr. Slavin? Yes. Mr. Chadwick? Yes. Mr. Bessie? Yes. Ms. Wirtz? Yes. And myself? Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, it is now 7.15, and I'm going to ask Ms. Wirtz to call for a motion to open the hearing from the application for Ms. Levante. So make a motion that we open a hearing regarding the application from Ms. Mary Levante, DBA Mama Mary's for a seasonal commoner, common victual wine and malt beverages license to an annual common victual wine and malt beverage license. Thank you. So, Is there a second to the motion second. for the hearing? We will, um, the, the motion is to open the hearing. I'm going to go for a roll call vote. Mr. Slavin. Yes. Mr. Bessie. Yes. Mr. Chadwick. Yes. Ms. Wirtz. Yes. Myself, yes. The hearing is now open. 
Ms. Labonte, I'm going to explain the what we do and how we do it, and then I'd like to just say hi to you. Um, you're muted. Can you unmute yourself? And can you make us, can you hit the video? No. Mr. Bessie, are you in touch with her? Yeah, give me one second. Thank you. So she can hear us, um, but for some reason she's having an issue with her uh, video and um, okay. so. The record, okay. The record will note that Ms. Labonte is present and I will ask for any questions or concerns or comments. You heard Mr. Sullivan earlier. And then I will accept a motion to add, oh, I'll, is there anybody in the audience, uh, in the attendees who would like to speak on behalf of this application to go from a seasonal to a year round wine and beer? Please raise your hand. Seeing nobody, I will now ask for a motion to close the hearing. I'll make a motion. Second. Motion made to close the hearing and seconded. Is there any further discussion on the motion to close the hearing? Hearing none. I will go for a roll call vote. Mr. Slavin? Yes. Mr. Bessie? Yes. Mr. Chadwick? Yes. Ms. Wirtz? Yes. Myself? Yes. The hearing is now closed. I will now accept a hearing. I mean, a motion, Ms. Wirtz. I make a motion to approve Mary Labonte, DBA Mama Mary's Common Victrola Wine and Malt Beverage License be commuted from a seasonal license to an annual license. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion on the motion? I will repeat what Mr. Sullivan said earlier, which is now you know, appropriate, um, that she has become a backbone of our community. She has regularly uh, sent meals to our first responders, whether they are in the middle of a snowstorm or any other things like that. So she has, she's really been, she's been a good person for the town. Okay, um, motion to grant with a second. I will go for a roll call vote. Mr. Slavin. Yes, thank you, Mary. Mr. Chadwick. Yes. Mr. Bessie. Yes, uh, thank you, Mama. <laughs> Ms. Wirtz. Yes. And myself, yes. Thank you very much, Mary, and um, congratulations. The paperwork will be ready, I'm guessing, maybe on Monday, but could you call the office tomorrow morning? And thank you very much. We appreciate everything that you've done for the town. Okay, Ms. Wirtz, we now have, is it seven? Oh, it is a 725, Ms. Wirtz. So I'm going to accept a motion from you. Make a motion that we open the discussion of the FY. Motion, open the hearing, please. Oh. Sorry. I do make a motion that we open the hearing regarding the um, FY 2022-23 grant application to the Mass Community Development Block Grant Program. A second to that motion. Second. Motion made and seconded to open the hearing. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I will go for a roll call vote. Mr. Slavin to open the hearing. Yes. Mr. Bessie to open the hearing. Yes. Mr. Chadwick? Yes. Ms. Wirtz? Yes. And myself, yes. The hearing is now open and we are going to be hearing from Wayne Dara. Is that how you pronounce your last name, sir? Yes, that is correct. Rhymes with Sarah. Okay, yeah. excellent. Do you have anybody else with you this evening, Mr. Dara? Um, I do not. Okay, thank you. Why don't you introduce yourself and do your presentation, sir? Thank you. Um, and then afterwards, after you've done your presentation, our board members, because this is a public hearing, our board members will be able to ask you questions and you will be asked to answer them if you can. Then we will open the hearing to the public and I will ask for people in the audience to raise their hand. We will let that person in so that person can ask 
any question or make a comment. Okay. We will Sounds not perfect. be taking any votes on any decisions this evening. We will simply be closing the hearing after your presentation and any other questions. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Wayne Dara. I'm the president of Community Opportunities Group, um, commonly known as COG. We have been the grant administrator for the town of Wareham off and on for quite a few years. Um, my goal tonight is uh, threefold. Um, first thing we need to do is discuss the status of the town's current grants. Um, every time you receive a grant, you have to do a public hearing when you're preparing the application, but you also, during the course of the grant, you have to do a second public hearing. So that will function as the second public hearing for these grants this evening. Um, we also need to discuss the town's community development strategy. And then we need to discuss um, the upcoming FY22 slash 23 CDBG application, which is due on March 3rd. The uh, town of Wareham currently has three open grants. Um, each of these grants was initially in the amount of $825,000. In a couple of the uh, cases, there was program income that was added to the grant to increase those amounts. Um, the oldest grant that's currently open is the 2019 grant. Um, it is very close to being fully expended. There is only one project that um, has not spent any funds yet. Um, and I think if, if you folks remember, um, there was a housing authority roof project that came in under budget a number of years ago, um, something we don't see anymore. And um, the town received permission to reprogram the unencumbered funds from that activity. They chose to do two things. They put $100,000 into a housing rehab program and they put approximately $147,000 um, uh, into the Highland Avenue sidewalk project, which was funded in a separate amount under the FY20 grant. Um, Mr. Dara, let me just interrupt here. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Sure. We actually have three people on this board who were elected in May of this year. So okay. they may not know the history, but you explaining the history is very helpful. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, so that project hasn't been put out to bid yet. Um, DHCD is aware of the timing of, the, of this money being expended, relying on the 2020 funds being expended, but we're hope, hoping to get that project out to bid um, later this year. Um, the FY20 project, um, or grant is um, also moving along pretty well. Um, there are a couple of projects that have kind of got hung up. Um, one of them is the Bayview Park sidewalk project. Um, again, this is the timing of the expenditure of these funds is related to other monies that are being dedicated to this project. And until um, the town gets to special town meeting in the spring to vote on whether or not they're gonna allocate CPA funds for this project, um, we're kind of on hold with those monies. Um, other than that, the housing rehab program is basically fully expended. We have um, one final case that we don't have enough money to uh, move forward with. So we have approximately um, $15,000 that is unexpended there. Um, we, as uh, I can't say, as you know, um, some of you might know that um, in the past, the town has funded the Boys and Girls Club and they were earmarked for $35,000 under the 2020 grant. Um, they shut down um, after the grant was submitted. So we had $35,000 to be reprogrammed. Um, we went through a process with the Department of Housing and Community Development, and we were able to reprogram those funds for 
CYE, uh, Community Youth Empowerment. So we are currently working with that group. Um, it's the first time they have received any CDBG funding. They don't have experience with them. So we're doing a little technical assistance, working through a budgeting and scope of services process with them. But we're hopeful that um, that program gets off the ground um, fairly soon. The other social service project that um, isn't fully expended there is uh, the GATRA transportation program. Um, and I'm sure a lot of that has to do uh, with COVID-19 and, and folks, some hesitancy there to get on public transportation. So, uh, but they're continuing to move forward with that program and hopefully they end up expending uh, the funds fully. I note that Ms. Sullivan is here. Would you like her to join you, Christine Sullivan? Oh, sure. Thank you. Yep. I couldn't tell if she was here or not. Yeah, no, she is here. Mr. White, would you let Ms. Sullivan in, please? Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. McDara. Um, that brings us to the most recent grant, which was the 2021 grant. Um, obviously, we're just getting started with that um, program. Um, to date, We've only spent um, funds on uh, Damien's Place and Turning Point. Um, but also in that grant is the rest of the money for the Highland Avenue sidewalks. Um, we have some money uh, to perform a building study on 195 Main Street, which is a, um, a dilapidated structure downtown. Um, and we obtained money for a first time program with the Wareham Police Department to address domestic violence. And that's a program that we um, haven't been, haven't got it off the ground yet, but hopefully um, we can get that um, up and running shortly. So those are the current grants that we have going. I'm not sure if anyone has any questions um, about any of those programs. Or should okay. you, would you like me to just continue or accept well, questions? Why don't you just continue? And I just want to point out to you, it's Damien's Pantry, not Damien's. I'm sorry. Damien's okay, so Pantry. I just want to make sure that the record shows that. Okay, why don't you Thank continue? You. Um, and then we can go back with the questions if that's okay. Okay. Um, so this brings us to the FY22, FY23 grant application. In the past, as a mini entitlement community, um, which means uh, Wareham is one of nine such communities in the state of Massachusetts that is guaranteed CDBG funding every year out of the small cities program. There are a number of larger communities in the state, such as Boston and Brockton and Plymouth, who receive funds directly from HUD as entitlement communities. But DHCD has seen fit to set up what they call a mini entitlement program for communities that meet certain um, levels of need. And Wareham qualifies and has qualified as a mini entitlement for a number of years now. In the past, each year, the amount of money that was set aside was $825,000. Um, because of all of the additional funding that was being funneled through um, the state, and specifically through the Community Development Block Grant Program, the Department of Housing and Community Development did not hold a funding round for the 22 fiscal year. So they have decided to basically do a double round and combined FY22 and FY23, which means this year, the town of Wareham has $1.65 million earmarked for its mini entitlement program. Um, there really weren't many other changes to the program other than doubling up the funding. Um, I think one thing that has become apparent um, both through feedback that was received at um, the community development um, strategy public hearing we had in December is that there's a real need um, and demand for a housing rehab program. The town did not include funding for a housing, a housing rehab program in its last two grant applications. Um, so it's my suggestion that we consider 
um, earmarking a significant portion of this grant um, for a housing rehab program. Um, I think we also want to continue to work with a lot of these social service agencies. Um, they have um, really done a wonderful job of providing services to the clients in Wareham. Um, they um, understand the rules and regulations of the CDBG program and work very well within those um, guidelines. We've had a good working relationship with a number of those organizations. So I think the, the town wants to continue to uh, fund those individuals. Now, in the past, the town has made a habit of setting aside the maximum amount of money it could for its social service programs, um, which is 20% of the total grant. Now, when the Department of Housing and Community Development decided to double up our funds, they didn't see fit to give us twice as long to spend them. <laughs> so instead of um, giving us 18 months to spend $825,000, they're giving us 24 months to spend 1.65. Um, so from my point of view, it doesn't make sense to double up on the past um, social service budgets, um, maybe increase them by 50%. Um, so I don't think we'll be maxing out at 20% this year with our social services. Um, and then the other things that come up have been either potential infrastructure projects or uh, Mr. Sullivan and I have uh, discussed um, the potential need for handicap accessibility improvements. Um, uh, generally, you cannot spend CDBG funds on um, buildings of general government use. The one exception for that is you can um, spend it for accessibility improvements. That doesn't mean making the building entirely compliant with ADA code but it does mean getting folks into the building, letting them um, circulate throughout the building, having accessible restrooms, et cetera. Um, so that's another potential project um, that has come up uh, for inclusion in, in this grant. Um, one of the other requirements for the CDBG program in Massachusetts is that um, all activities need to comply with the Commonwealth's sustainable development principles. Um, that's typically not a problem for us um, because we're rarely doing new construction. If we're rebuilding existing roads, if we're rehabbing existing housing, if we're making existing buildings handicap accessible, we meet the sustainable development principles um, by default because we're using, reusing, or improving existing structures, not building new on vacant land. Um, and social services are not subject to the su sustainable development principles. Um, and then one last thing uh, to discuss is the community development um, strategy. Uh, we really had a, a wonderful meeting back in December uh, to discuss the community development strategy with the public. It was very well attended. Um, there were a lot of really good questions. Um, I received some education myself on the town of Wareham and um, its past activities and, and issues. And I think, um, I think we did a pretty good job of uh, focus, focusing in on what we needed to do at that meeting. We, um, distributed the CDS um, through departments throughout the town, looking for additional comments. Um, I haven't received any. I don't think Mr. Sullivan has received any. Um, so I think we might be re uh, ready to um, uh, approve that CDS um, as written for submission to DHCD. Okay. Does that conclude your presentation, sir? That does. Okay. Um, Ms. Wirtz, you had your hand up first. 
Yeah, I do. Um, Mr. Dara, I have a question on, um, and again, ex forgive me if just being new that I don't understand um, how far we can reach with these funds, but I have a question. One of the things that is really um, top of mind and top of budget for Wayham right now is we have a lot of storage issues that old storage, old um, um, infrastructure is gone. Overall, um, it, it, we're like looking at big funds. Um, if you go on Wareham Matters today, you'll see a response from a number of um, citizens who have received big updates and up upticks in the in their tax bill. So when we're looking at this, I mean, I think there's probably two parts of this storage thing. Um, you know, so you look at this storage that services the individual house, and I think we're probably responsible for that. And there's a number of residents in the town that are not on storage, so they're not interested in this at all. But you have um, a part of the storage need that is infrastructure for the overall town betterment. There are, are the, the, and I'm not an expert, but there are the central service parts of a storage system that we need a lot of work on too. And they're not specific to any specific home, but to this the town overall. And I'm curious as whether some of these grant funds can be used to address that situation. Mr. Darrow? Uh, specifically improving the storage infrastructure? Yes. Okay. Um, it's a little, it's a little tricky, uh, because when we're working with these funds, they need to be used to meet one of three national objectives. Uh, the national objectives under the CDBG program are assistance to loan market income individuals, um, prevention or elimination of slums and blight, or an urgent need, um, Let's take urgent need off the table because I've, in all my 27 years of doing this, we've never actually done a project under urgent need. Um, so we need to be thinking about assistance to low market in income individuals or uh, addressing slum and blight. Um, this we might have actually done, be an urgent need, by the way. <laughs> um, it's something that would have had to come up in the last 18 months. Okay. Thank you, um, Mr. Dare. So you're welcome. So when we do some of these local infrastructure uh, programs, uh, if when we re reconstruct neighborhood streets, um, often we'll do full depth reconstruction that includes replacing uh, water and sewer lines. Um, so there are areas where it can be done piecemeal, but that would be in an area where we had done a slum and blight inventory and determined that at least 25% of the roadway in question um, was in fair or poor condition. If we were gonna be doing it townwide, we wouldn't be able to use that because uh, we you can't do a slum and blight inventory for the entire town. Um, and that puts us back to assistance to low market income individuals. And that becomes, uh, that becomes problematic because the town is not um, a majority loan market income. So we'd be spending funds that help everyone, but the town is less than 51% loan moderate income. Thank so you. it doesn't really become a workable mm -hmm. problem on a big scale. Thank you. Mr. Slavin, you, you're next, I guess. Yeah, sorry. my. Uh iPad decided that it didn't have any more energy left in it. Uh, we've gone through these programs for a long time, at least for me. Uh, and as uh, Wayne has explained, uh, you have to first look and see what areas are, are having classified as slum and blight, which is a uh, criteria. There's no way we can do a project that covers the whole town because therefore the whole town is not slum and blight certified. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very careful what you do and what you're allowed to do. We also have a time frame. It makes me a little bit nervous 
uh, when I'm looking at a couple of projects that are sitting and waiting, uh, you know, in 2019, you've got two projects there that, you know, are sitting with monies. And I think you're running out of time. The uh, Bayview Park, we kind of promised the residents would do this. And I know we're waiting for something else, but again, you know, it makes it more difficult. And every time we wait, the, the cost of doing all this stuff is substantially increasing with the cost of changes in the uh, stretch codes and everything else they were dealing with. Uh, Gatcher is still way behind catching up with getting riders. Uh, maybe there's some other sorts of uh, different things besides Gatcher that could supply ridership help to those that really need ridership help. We may want to take a look past what we have available. Uh, we don't have a Boys and Girls Club anymore because New Bedford basically canceled out. We talked about, and I think Jared also talked about putting together a Wareham Boys and Girls Club, which definitely uh, covers, uh, if we leave it into the onset area there, it covers the, you know, the uh, slum of light area, but it also covers a real need for those people in that financial classification. And uh, I know we're looking at some other group that we're putting something together with, but we talked seriously about putting together a real Boys and Girls Club that would have a future. When you have two years banged into one, you have an unusually large amount of money that can do something when you have a, a small amount of money you can't do anything proper with. I always believe that when you have the proper amount of money, you do it once and do it right. The problem for most municipalities is we're always compromising, so we can't do it the best way. We do it the best we can get, but in the long run, it doesn't work. So those concern me very much that we should be looking there. Uh, Damon's uh, Pantry and Turning Point. I think Damon's Pantry is in the process of building a brand new building, etc. I don't know. I, I think maybe we could make a con contribution to the actual facility because, again, it, but my concern is where it's located may not be in, in an area that qualifies as well, but the actual function they do does qualify. So that's something to seriously look at because they're doing a fundraising now and they need more money there as well. Um, I just want to make sure that we don't run into the situation that we start to lose uh, because people remember this, this CBG grant was a little over a million dollars and has you know, dropped down over the years to 800 some thousand. Uh, if we don't use it and we lose it the following year when they get a, you get a new grant, it's that much less. So it's kind of critical that we don't keep holding on to stuff that we can't do and figure out how we can do. And uh, I think for this particular 22, 23, we seriously sit down, you know, with Wayne, town administrator, Mr. Buckland, you know, and see what the some blight area is and what our biggest needs are that would qualify. I don't want to just spend money to spend money. Way back, if people remember, they probably don't. Uh, when the President Obama came in and the economy was really having real issues, and they had this, you know, program to give money out, they threw money everywhere, and most of the money was completely wasted. It didn't do anything. So you just don't spend money to spend money because it doesn't do anything. But we have an opportunity here to do a, a one-time, maybe a real serious, you know, well thought out project, get it done and have some real long-term benefit, not for a year or two, but a 20 year plus type of thing. So at least for myself, I want to see some serious thought that goes into what's going on now and to make sure 2019, uh, we don't lose. And also 2020, there's a couple of things that make me nervous as well. Thank you. That's my, that's my comments for now. Thank you. Do either of the rest of you gentlemen have any questions or comments? It, please raise your hand. No. Nope. Then I will ask if any member of the public chooses to ask a question or make a comment. Would you let Miss? Would you let Ms. Scharf into the meeting, please, Mr. White? What I'm going to do is ask individuals to come in one at a time, and then they will leave and we and you would answer their questions, Mr. Darrer, and then, okay. I'm looking for Ms. Scharf, please. Okay. 
All right, I don't see, oh, there you are. Good evening, Ms. Scharf, you are muted and um, do you have a question or a comment, ma'am? You're muted, so we can't hear you. And I would point out to anybody who's raised their hand that you are you are asking questions about the presentation that we have been given tonight. It's not a debate. It's a it's a question like um, Ms. Wirtz had a specific question about whether something is eligible or not. So, uh, Ms. Ms. White said, I would suggest that we make the comment to the shop that she write or submit by email what her comments would be, so we, we can know what they are. If we can't get, it, can't speak tonight. Yeah, I, Madam Chair, I'm sorry, I'm a little confused. I didn't think this isn't a Q and A. This is the public input to things they're interested in. Correct. Right. So uh, what I'm, yes, you're correct. So it it is. If Ms. Scharf has a suggestion about a program, which would in essence be in a question form, as Ms. Wurtz's question was really that, I believe, that's what we would expect to hear from Ms. Scharf or anyone else who's raised their hands. Did that? Okay. So I don't see Ms. Oh, Scharf. Yeah, sorry, I was just confused. I thought it was people saying what they're interested in. And we're gathering the information. Yes, we are gathering their information, but their information would be, it might be in the form of a question as for instance, Ms. Wirtz's question, I believe was asking whether the funds would be available for that particular item that she was questioning about. Right, no, I just, what I'm saying is I think it's unfair to put Mr. Dara on the spot for a million different things that could possibly be asked. Right, I'm just, we are gathering information. He is not, going to be required to answer the information we are gathering information so it's it's public input to very good yep. we, yeah public input. yeah thank you so mr gadara and miss sullivan might be taking notes um and that's where we're going so miss sharf i see you but i can't i mean i don't see you and i can't hear you so can you try again please i can now maybe hear you yeah can you hear me now Yes, you're really kind of wobbly on the voice, but go ahead. Could you identify yourself, please, for the record? Linda Sass in Onset Mass. Can you, um, so I was wondering about possible micro enterprise uses. I know that um, it looks like some of the uh, funds can be used for revitalizing downtowns, and I know that Wareham and Onset are both pretty interested in that. So. I don't know what the process would be for um, getting micro enterprises going, but you know, the things like small bakeries or art shops, things like that, that would contribute to the overall, um, you know, greatness of Onset in Wareham. And then I also wondered about sidewalks in Onset. Um, they certainly need some help too, in addition to um, sidewalks elsewhere, but I wondered how that could be figured in anywhere. Okay, thank you. Could you address those to just send it to either Mr. Sullivan or myself so that we have them in writing so that we can add them to the folder that Mr. Dara would be thinking about and that we would be thinking about? I will, and I just have one more question, if sure. I may. Um, the, Mr. Dara at the previous meeting mentioned the community needs questionnaire and he was working from one that was a 2006 version. So I know that there has been other public input from other sources, but I would ask that the planning board do another community needs assessment um, so that they can work from something that's beyond 2006. Thank you. Thank you. And you, you will send those to myself and Mr. Sullivan, if you don't mind. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Scharf. Thank you. And Happy New Year to you. Um, Mr. Meniz, would you let Mr. Meniz into the meeting, please? Sometimes it takes a while, Mr. Dara. <laughs> and he might be there. No. Yep, there he is. 
Good evening, Mr. Meniz. Could you identify yourself for the record? And again, it's suggestions. You will not be getting an answer this evening, but you're suggesting or asking a question that might lead us to consider other things. Go ahead, Mr. Minis. You're muted, sir. I was wondering, this is 2223. Could you identify yourself? My name is Jim Manise. I'm a resident of the town of Wareham on Cranberry Highway. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, as it's a 2223 grant application, um, when would the funds be available and when would the ability to expend those funds expire? Okay, thank you. Um, and do you, uh, do you choose to answer that, Mr. Dare? Sure. Okay. Um, typically, the grant decisions are issued um, sometime in July. Uh, the grant timeline will start running July 1st, regardless of whether, of whether they're issued the decisions yet or not. And it will go, in this case, the 24 month implementation period will run from July 1st of 2023 to June 30th of 2025. Thank you. Thank, thank you. And I'd also like to um, thank him for supporting the um, housing rehabilitation program. Um, it's a great program. You can use up a lot of money fast. I know they have people on waiting lists. So I, I would hope that the select board would give that um, favorable consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Meniz. Could you also send those to Mr. Um, Sullivan and myself? Thank you. Um, uh, yep, it should yep. be online, but thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, Ms. Morrissey from a Prevention, I don't, I don't have your full title, but Leah Morrissey, please, would you let her into the meeting? I believe that's my point. Okay. Hi there, how is everyone? Good. Could you identify yourself for the record and who you are representing, please? Yes, uh, so my name is Leah Morrissey. I'm here in Wareham. Um, I work out of High Point with the Prevention Services team. Um, and I just wanted to make a comment and I apologize, I didn't catch his name, uh, Mr. Slavin. Um, I really like the idea of the Boys and Girls Club. I think that, especially since COVID, um, a lot of the kids in Wareham are struggling even more. And I think that that would provide them a healthy um, opportunity to spend some time outside of school and give them a safe place to be. So I just wanted to add that. Okay, thank you. Do you have anything else you'd like to add? Um, no, thank you. Just happy new year. Thank you, happy new year to you. And could you send those, your comments again to Mr. Sullivan and myself? And Mr. Um, Chadwick can get you the addresses if you don't have them. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you, and Happy New Year. I don't see anybody else with their hand raised in terms of wanting to speak. So we will go back to, um, I don't believe there's any further discussion necessary unless any one of you has something. Mr. Sullivan, do you choose to speak? Yeah, were, were we interested in voting in the CDS? tonight or getting that uh, that push forward that could that could take one of the things off of our objective and doesn't really do anything to the uh, grant proposal. I can't. It's not on there for a vote. It's on a there for a discussion only. Well, that's too bad. I know. So I'll put it on the agenda for the 17th, sir, if that's your suggestion. I, I know there's a time. I know we need to move forward on some of the stuff, but um, it's not on the agenda as a vote. I can't take a vote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and I think it's what you've heard is it's from uh, Mr. Darrow, some of the things we've gone over, including with Ken. I agree. We've met with talking about something at the or a place on the Boys and Girls Club. The, the creation of that and then the funding thereafter. This is we are on an 18 month funding schedule, everybody needs to remember. So we get that going. The hope is to have it continue on its own. That's sort of in the, um, for lack of a better term, rainbows and unicorn world. 
And the concern is what happens thereafter? Who's that falling upon? How are you establishing it? It's um, that's something I think, I mean, if we're going into that, I, my fear is we end up exactly what Mr. Slayton was talking about, having the unexpended funds. So we just need to be very careful, but I agree. It's something we work we think we want to try and do, especially at the multi-service center. It's just how that's being put together and, and who's being put together. We, we better have the all-star crew ready tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. This is, oh, Mr. Chadwick, go ahead. Uh, if, if you don't mind, I'd like to add something to that. Uh, talk about the Boys and Girls Club just real quick. Um, I've done a huge amount of extensive research on it. So the people that are wondering about it and asking questions about it, I've been involved with it uh, since uh, two years before, I think it was a year and a half before they shut down. Uh, it's not easy. It's extremely hard uh, to start up. And you also need to be underneath a chapter of another division. Um, so while I'm saying this, if people are interested in doing this, please reach out to me uh, because last time I brought it up, not a lot of people uh, were willing to do it. It's, it's not easy and it's hard. So that was it. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay. I don't see anybody else who would choose to contribute. And so therefore I would ask Ms. Wirtz for a motion to close the hearing, please. And you're muted. Don't let Mr. Slavin hold that. Hold on. Do you want to? Oh, oh, yeah, Mr. Dara, go ahead. Yeah. I don't think we're closing. I think you're keeping it open to the next meeting. Is that is that correct, Wayne? Or what's the? Yeah. Do you, do you want it? Uh, do you want us to continue the hearing, sir? Um. Well, I'm not sure if we if we continue this hearing, that means we still can't vote next meeting, too. Correct. That's correct, because it's not on the agenda. As a, if it if I continue it the way it is, I can't. Right. So. Um, you couldn't put as another agenda item thereafter? Oh, I could. Yes, I could. Okay. So let's, yes. Okay, Ms. Wirtz, I'm going to ask you then for a motion to continue the hearing to discuss the blah, 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 as it, uh, they write things like that in the mind. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion to continue the Hang hearing. Hang on one second, Mr. Dara, go ahead. Sorry. Do you have a question, sir? Could we do the meeting after that, the first meeting in February. Yeah. Uh, I have a I conflict on the 17th. I wouldn't be able to, to attend here. I've got another grant public hearing that evening. Okay. So hang on. Let me tell you what that date is. Or you I agree it's the 31st. The 31st. I wasn't planning to have a meeting on the 31st of January. Oh, we're, we're skipping. So we're going third, 17th. And then we're going the first. Yeah. We're going first and third Tuesdays. Okay. Wayne, so, is the seventh? Is that too late for you, or does that the seventh and the twenty-first? No, the se the seventh is fine. Okay, so that would be February seventh. So, Miss Words, your motion will be to continue the hearing to a time specific, which would be February seventh at say seven fifteen. Make a motion that we continue the hearing to discuss the FY twenty twenty two twenty three grant application to the Massachusetts Community Development Grant Block Program to February 7th, 2023 at 7.15 p.m. Is there a second? second. Motion made second. and seconded to continue the hearing. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I will go for a roll call vote. Mr. Chadwick? Yes. Mr. Slavin? Yes. Mr. Bessie? Mr. Bessie, I can't hear you. Uh, yes. Thank you. Ms. Wirtz? Yes. And myself? Yes. So the hearing is continued until that time. Mr. Dara, thank you very much, Ms. Sullivan. We didn't get to talk to you, but thank you very much for attending the meeting. Thank you. You're welcome. And Merry Christmas to both. I mean, Merry, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. How thank confused you. I am. Happy New Year to you, too. Um, just one final question before I go, and that's, yes, sir. is there typically when these meetings are held in person, there's a sign-in sheet that's distributed um, we need to provide something like that for as part of the hearing. Is it possible for the IT folks to print out 
a list of people who were in attendance or something along those lines that we can substitute for that? Do you need them in attendance or the piece, people who spoke at the meeting? Attendance. Attendance would be best uh -oh. if, if it's only Look limited it to who spoke. Okay. So what I can on. get. Uh, hang on a second. It's in the system, Judy. It's no problem. It is in the system. Mr. Yes, White, can you confirm that it is in the system? Mr. White, can you just let me know that, yes, it's in the system? I can't oh. confirm. It's you listed can? on the it's listed on the participants. We have nineteen right now. Excellent. Uh, no, we, we had, and we had twenty originally. I see attendees as ten and participants as nine. Judy, it changed because we just nineteen. You, it will show we were able to look back and see how many people were out. Okay, there. so yes, yeah. we are able to provide that list for Mr. Darrow. Okay. Is that correct? Correct. Excellent. Yep. Best of our knowledge, we'll make it work, Wayne. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much. Good evening. Thank Have you. Have a good night. Thank good night. you. Good night. Okay. Good night. No relation. So. <laughs> we would know if you were a relation because you'd be sort of, you know, whatever. Anyway, because Mr. Sullivan was pulling my leg today and he got it quite much longer than it was originally before he talked with me. Uh, let's see, ton administrator's report. All now right. that I've lined you up. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> uh, so, uh, there should be no surprise um, if you can see this. Just uh, coming before you to go over just a little bit of the uh, Bayview Park. You've had the presentation by Weston and Sampson already. We're still not at the 90% um, design. We're at 60, but hoping 90% soon. I'm asking, I don't. I know I don't need um, your permission by the policy being removed, but I'm asking at the same time the, the thoughts and if you will, the will of the board, the select board to um, to go forward on this. And I'd like to just give some reminders to maybe some of the folks that um, that don't know what this is about. It's uh, about the Bay, Bayview Park, which is right by the McFadden Center and the uh, Onset Pier. Uh, here's what we're trying to do. Accessible walkway upgrades, including an ADA compliant connection from what's now the McFadden Center and parking lot on the park's Eastern side down to the beach on the park's western side. And just so people understand, although there's a not no longer 99, a little bit less than that year lease, that building is still the town of Wareham's building at the end when it's, uh, you know, I don't want to alarm you, but none of us will see it uh, in our time, but it will be. Uh, it's also widening of the sidewalk on Onset Ave. Strengthen the connection of the village center to at the corner of South Boulevard to Onset Ave. New park lighting, new ADA accessible ramp and deck at the existing gazebo, new metal guardrail along Onset Ave, and new fencing surrounding the Memorial Rock. Relocation of existing benches to capture waterfront vistas and views across the park. Relocation of existing site monuments, bike rack, and the flagpole as needed to accommodate the improvements. Protection and pruning of existing trees for health and reinvigoration. New tree and shrub plantings throughout. Stormwater management with rain gardens, some new drainage connections, and site restoration and other minor improvements that may be associated with the items below. Um, there we go, a little, little bit of a better view. It's, um, so that's the location. And one of the things I think is truly fantastic is creating of this, this circular space and being utilized uh, with the gazebo and creating a hub. It reminds me a lot of, um, you know, kind of what we've done with, with Bessie Park with some of the walkways through there, which I think need to be a little bit reinvigorated as well in the future, but it's a future project. This, you've seen most of this, but one of the things I wanted to go over so you can really see where the where the pathways are coming in making it accessible for the for for ADA accessibility and the handicap if you go up this way right now i mean the pitch on that is unbelievable mm -hmm. it's also um, 
I know we'd like to speak to Josh because this this going down to the beach, the, the grade changes are, it's gonna require a substantial amount of work to this due to the coastal dune. And the zigzag ADA one is actually less work, which should be brought up. I know there was some pushback before on it, but at the end of the day, you're doing less intrusion if you can do that zigzag. That's gonna be a separate thing later, but it's just something to keep in mind. Um, one of the others is when you're coming into the park, this would be from the South Boulevard Onset Ave entrance. It's just really attractive using some of the granite boulders and you see the lighting and making it, as I said, more of an attractive entry point. And that's where these, if you look at the bricks, they're a, uh, they're, they're a change because they're designating the entry points to it. Also, the sidewalks and pathways within are going to be a little bit of a different color and also have some stamping on it with some, uh, some nautical items, if you will. Uh, going through, you'll see later on, I'll show you enlargement of what's being done around the gazebo to make it ADA accessible and some, some additional changes. Um, see if I can get to it. It's not going to catch up in time. Hold on. I'll show you some of the plantings, also some of the changes for the lighting. It's gonna be a lot of the period lights put in here to really make it attractive. One of the things we're looking at too is period lights at focal points and then pathway lights along the, the whole way. But I think the period lights might be a better option just uh, over the long time. Um, this is all the drainage and stuff, which is godly gook to me nine out of 10 times, but if we can get to the, uh, that's what they were talking about, the existing rock. More, this is the, this is now around the gazebo. If you look, so this is the end facing more towards uh, Onset Ave and such. One of the things we're asking too, is where this is these landings. So this is the ramp landing ramp landing. We've asked to push these out. So the landings actually become almost a little decking and, and viewing where you can either have some seats or whether when there's weddings happening, you can utilize the space a little more effective. So you can have a couple different groups either sitting around there really enjoying the spot or again during events that becomes focal points for taking pictures or just uh, enjoying the space and giving where more uh, room around the uh, gazebo, if you will. Mm -hmm. So this whole project, and you know, you've seen this before, but I just want to give you some of the the updates. Um, it's we've had set aside for the CDBG grant two hundred seventy nine thousand four hundred. We've used engineering funds through our Chapter nineties on this. Um, but we're going to need to, to finish this off. And this is with a, uh, I'd say we have roughly a $250,000 contingency built into this number, 1.1 million from community mm -hmm. preservation funds to finish this off. So that's what we're asking to put forward for community preservation. I've heard from the Board of Selectmen that this is an important project to get done and it was promised to onset. So. I'm interested to hear from the Board of Selectmen about me putting in the application, which the deadline is closely approaching. Um, if you choose to comment on this, please raise your hand. Mr. Slavin. Uh, under penalty of death from my wife, uh, this is something that we more than just promised. Uh, we've had issues with the safety of, uh, of what we call a sidewalk along Lonset Ave and stuff and the whole area there. Uh, if anybody ever gets down to Sacramento Harbor over at Howard and stuff, there's a little area just like this in which you see almost every weekend someone having a wedding, uh, which overlooks the harbor. It's got a small little gazebo and a small open area, and I think it'd be a huge asset to the area. But also, it's something that uh, shows that the town does give back to all areas, and especially to Onset. And of course. Uh, my wife's right next to me, probably ready to kill me about the conservation issues. Yes, dear. I'm getting a bad look. Derek, you're in trouble now. Okay, anyone else of you choose to make it, Mr. Chadwick? Is this, uh, Mr. Sullivan, is this going to be a phased project or is there 
timeline deadline for it? Yeah, we need to, we need to move our, our butts would be the technical term to get it going. Okay. Uh, once it passed town meeting, you know, if it were to pass town meeting, you, we need to start the project really um, as soon as possible. Obviously, you're not going to do it in the middle of the summer at that location, but yeah, that, that's going to have to move quickly. Um, municipal maintenance, we've pledged about 85,000 worth of in-kind as well. Um, I'd like to not be able to use municipal maintenance because if you've seen all the projects they've done, they've done tremendous jobs. But when we're doing those projects, we're not doing uh, the other day-to-day -day activities. It's a give and take. So it's too bad because the work done by the by the staff and Mr. Menard is, is phenomenal. I mean, just look at the, the gazebo, Heinz Field. I mean, some of the other great projects we've recently done in Onset. Agreed. Thank you. Thanks. Any other questions? Ms. Wards? Yep. No questions, just a comment in that I um, really appreciate this type of work happening in the town, um, especially for it to be um, wheelchair friendly. It's as I look at the, the town's image overall, we see this happening. We see the stuff happening um, down the end of um, Main Street. And I start looking at other places where things like this added a couple more would really help. So in the future, you know, maybe doing something like this down along um, 28 where where the water is on the side across from WaterWiz, maybe doing something down in West Wareham. This type of productive green space that addresses the whole community is what makes a town so beautiful. And we have a large piece of land um, where one of these will be great, but three or four, one for each um, different area of the town would be magnificent over, you know, over the next five or six years or whatever it takes to ultimately do it. Thank you. I'd like to add that this is a project that, yes, I believe in 110%. Um, it, I've seen the concept. I've been in on the presentations by, I can't remember the firm that made them, but this is something that is really important. The Banshell was recently renovated, not totally 100%, but certainly has been brought up to, uh, you know, a better arrangement for the concerts and stuff that go there. Onset, the village of Onset, which is obviously a part of the town of Wareham, really is a magnet for artists and beachgoers. And, you know, it's just, it's a wonderful place. And this park has been a central location mm -hmm. from the beginning. And we need to show off the good parts. And I agree with you, Ms. Wirtz. It's, it's extremely important for us to boast about what we have that is awesome. And I believe that this part will be awesome. Any other questions or comments? So, Mr. Sullivan. So is that a yes or a no? I will take, I will, I will um, ask the board if they choose to endorse, we're not going to vote on it, but uh, would, would you endorse a CPC application for a million one? Yes. Yes. Mr. Chadwick. Yes. Mr. Slavin. Yes. Mr. Bessie. Yes. And myself. Absolutely. Thank you. Me, Mr. Sullivan. me too. Oh, I, didn't I ask you? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, we'll do it again. No, no. It, uh, I, no, we're good. We're good. Well, I, th I think she was on the fence, but I, I think we can get it. <laughs> so okay, Mr. Sullivan, do you have anything else, sir? No, I appreciate it. Happy, happy New Year to everybody. Let's see, you know, so 2023 is a really great, happy and positive New Year. And Thank you. Very happy for the community. Thank you. Liaison and initiative reports. I'm going to start with you, Ms. Ward, so I don't forget you. Yeah, I, I'm good. And nothing right now. <laughs> a, lot, a, lot of the, a lot of the places where I'd be liaison have been closed for a few weeks because of holidays. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chadwick. Liaison initiative, board comments, blah, blah. 
Oh, I'm not. I can't go to say blah blah anymore. Oh uh, well, you know I have blah blah, but blah blah. So now I'm good. <laughs> Excellent, Mr. Bessie. Uh, no, I'm good tonight. Thank you. Thank you, and Mr. Slavin. Uh, obviously, no meetings, no me probably a week and a half. My only comment really to the board in general is that uh, we should start getting together possible articles for spring town meeting as it's approaching very quickly. And normally what happens in December and January, it's holidays and everything else. Before you know it, it's time to put stuff together. So we need to really think about what we want to do. Thank you. I just would add that the planning board and the WRA had a joint workshop meeting. And during that meeting, two members of the planning board agreed to take on the overwhelming task of actually addressing two parts of our bylaws. I believe it's part two and part 17 it has to do with site assessment. And the reason we had the joint meeting was to hopefully be able to move the WV1 sub um, zoning onto the Springtown meeting. And of course, as Mr. Sullivan points out, that's rapidly approaching. Uh, Article 17 was unable to, or part, Article 17 of the zoning bylaws, we could not put to that forth in the October meeting because it hadn't been properly advertised. That will be going forth. But again, two members of the planning board have volunteered to work very hard um, to get two other portions that would be very critical portions before the town meeting, which would be bringing, which would enable um, the town to apply for grants within the WV1 district. It would be WV1 subdivision. I'm not really sure what it would be called, but, but that would be, that's, that's really good news. Um, and there's obviously a deadline on those as well. So Merry Christmas to all of you. Happy Hanukkah to all of you. Happy Kwanzaa to all of you. And Happy New Year to all of you. And that's it, I believe. So, Mr. Slavin. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. second third, Debatable, fourth, I will fifth. go for a roll call vote. Ms. Wirtz. Yes. Mr. Chadwick. Yes. Mr. Slavin. I'll abstain. <laughs> <laughs> if we all abstain, do we have to stay here tonight? Yes. Mr. Bessie. I mean, yes, Mr. Bessie. Yes. And myself, yes. Are you seriously abstaining, Mr. Slavin? Gonna give you a laugh once in a while. I already had my laugh of the day. Four zero one. We are adjourned. Merry and happy and safe. And um, thank you very much. And Wareham, good night. Thank you very much for your input this evening. Bye, kids. Bye. <laughs>